Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're jumping into uh, the world of note-taking apps. Specifically for Android, we found a great YouTube breakdown from Versus Breakdown comparing two big ones, Noteen and Notewise. And our goal here is really to unpack the key features, the main differences, so you can get a better sense of which one might actually fit how you take notes. Okay, let's dig in. Let's start with Noteen. The source material uh, really highlighted its handwriting experience, said it was smooth, responsive, what exactly makes that work so well? And why is low latency such a big deal if you're trying to mimic, you know, pen on paper? Yeah, it's interesting. No team seems almost laser focused on creating that um, natural writing feel. The video mentioned things like customizable templates, which is nice. But the key is that low latency writing. It basically means almost zero delay between your stylus touching the screen and the ink appearing. It makes it feel, well, real. Mm. Plus, it has various brush effects. So, yeah, it's really geared towards people who take lots of handwritten notes, maybe for class or annotating PDFs heavily. Right, like for diagrams or marking things up. Exactly. And speaking of access, the pricing is pretty interesting. There's a free version, standard monthly or annual premium, but they also have a lifetime option. It's around $12, which is honestly incredibly accessible if handwriting is your main thing. Hmm, 12 bucks for life. That's quite appealing if it fits your style. But, okay, what if you're not mainly handwriting notes? Does no teen still hold up, or is it maybe too specialized? Does that focus limit it for, say, someone who mostly types? That's a really good point. I mean, it can do basic text notes and PDF viewing, of course, but its standout features, the things that make it special, are definitely tied to using a stylus. If you primarily type, you probably won't tap into its biggest strengths. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it shines for handwriting, but maybe not the all-rounder for everyone. Okay, so then let's pivot. What about note-wise? Our source suggested it has a, uh, a pretty different philosophy, more connected, and a sleeker UI, maybe more like what people expect from, say, an iPad app. Exactly. Note-wise definitely seems aimed at a more, let's say, interconnected workflow. Collaboration is a big piece. The breakdown really emphasized its real-time collaboration. It's not just sharing a file. It's like a shared digital workspace. Think your projects, brainstorming sessions. Ah, so multiple people working on the same note at once. Precisely. And beyond that, it has strong cross-platform syncing. So your notes are there on your Android tablet, your phone, maybe even your desktop. And it offers flexible cloud storage options, starting from 1 GB up to 100 GB, which is quite a range. Okay, storage options are key. What about the cost for note-wise? It starts at $2.99 a month for that 1 GB tier, with higher tiers for more space. And interestingly, it also has a lifetime license, but it's priced at $16.99. So yeah, if you compare the two, NoteWise is built for sharing, syncing, accessing notes anywhere, managing potentially larger archives. That all sounds powerful, the real-time stuff, the syncing everywhere. But does that complexity create any hurdles? Is it still simple enough for someone who just wants a basic personal digital notebook? Well, it's designed to be pretty intuitive, so the learning curve isn't necessarily steep. But yes, it definitely presents more features up front. If all you want is simple solo note taking, some of those collaboration tools or extensive sync settings might feel like um, extra clutter you don't need. Right, it's a trade-off then. Potential power versus streamlined simplicity. So with these two different approaches, noting focusing on that tactile writing, note-wise on connectivity. How does someone listening decide? What's the key question they should ask themselves? I think it really boils down to how you work with your notes. This raises the central question. Are you mostly working alone? Like, are you a student taking detailed lecture notes mainly for yourself or an artist sketching ideas? If that super responsive, feature-rich handwriting is paramount, Noteteen looks like a really strong choice. Okay, the solo creator or student. Right. But on the other hand, do you need to constantly share notes, work with others in real time, or jump between multiple devices throughout your day? If collaboration, robust syncing, cloud flexibility, and that polished UI are more important for your workflow, maybe for team projects or managing notes across work and personal devices, then NoteWise probably aligns better. So it really comes down to your personal workflow solo and handwriting focused or connected and collaborative. Exactly. Your specific needs and honestly, just your preferences for how an app feels should guide that final choice. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? How these choices about seemingly simple tools like note apps can actually say a lot about our wider digital lives and how we manage information. These aren't just places to jot things down anymore. They actively shape how we learn, organize thoughts, and even work together. So as you think about this, consider not just the features list, but how that tool will genuinely fit into and maybe even improve your own way of thinking and working digitally.